So what I'm going to cover today is the objective section of the SOAP note. You can see that we, first of all, are under the objective tab. So subjective, objective, ADL, assessment plan, notes, and narrative. But we're, we have selected the objective tab right here. This is where you're really going to use the macros the most. But I'm going to show you the functionality first. And in future videos uh, or other videos, we'll get into more advanced SOAP note functions and features when we talk about how to use macros for this. So right, for right now, I'm just going to show you how to enter a test and the result. So the test, for example, a test could be any number of things, but um, one of the things that is most common would be range of motion. Um, so you can see there's cervical and lumbar ranges of motion, just as an example. So the test we would do, for example, is cervical flexion. And you could see I selected that button and I put cervical flexion. And you can see it shows that the normal degrees of cervical flexion are 50. The result would be what you actually measured with the patient. That could be done in, in a couple of different ways. You can either select the percent change, for example, decrease 10%, or if you had another range of motion, you might say cervical extension, where the normal is 60, and the result, you can actually show the specific degrees, let's say it's 30. The narrative that would generate from those two things simply, simply is decrease 10% range of motion cervical flexion versus 50 degrees normal, or um, 30 degree range of, mo range of motion for cervical extension versus the 60 degree of, of normal. So let's go back to, to that. And here you can put your goal. So the goal in this case would be, it was 30 to begin with. Let's say we want to make it 40 by next reevaluation. Um, you wouldn't necessarily use severity in this case or location. Um, so what the narrative would then read, as you can see under the plan, would be achieve 40 degrees range of motion cervical extension versus the normal of 60 degrees by the next reevaluation, and that's in the plan section of the notes. So that's really simply how how you would do things. Other types of tests would be um, you'd have neurological tests, like let's say for example dermatomes. Uh, the dermatome you would be testing would be you'd see the the nerve root level as well as what patch of skin that actually covers. Okay, um, so let's say we use C5 as a dermatome. The result would be under dermatome, and you can see the different ratings. So normal sensation, let's just say it's normal. However, another one might be C6, and in that case, it might be hypostasia. Right. If you look at the narrative again, it starts to update those things. Normal C5, hypostasia, decreased sensation at C6. So again, what you want to do on your exam um, or after your first evaluation is have these things. And that will appear in your SOAP note the first time. On subsequent visits, um, it will not show up in the note. So let me explain a little bit more detail about how that works. Just by entering this, it's going to automatically say that this exam was actually performed. Okay. On subsequent exam, I mean subsequent visits, the daily note would show something like this, where you'd see the findings from the previous visit, but it would not show up in the narrative. All right, so if we go to the narrative now, you can see how it's no objective test performed today. See previous documentation. So that's how the subsequent visit would come back. Now let's say um, you went in on a subsequent visit and the patient had some changes. Um, for example, the range of motion changes. Um, so you would go back and say, all right, it's not 30 anymore, it's 35. Automatically, it's going to show that that test was performed again on this date and in the narrative that test would show back up. Another way to do this would be to use this button 
which says no exam right now. If you use full exam, it automatically will show in the narrative that everything was performed again. Of course, if you did the exam, you'd want to update the findings. So there's going to be some tests that you want to show up every single visit. Let me show you how you make sure that that finding shows up every single visit as opposed to the other ones that will only show up when you modify something or you select perform or you select full exam. Uh, in this case, uh, let's take posture, for example, anterior head shift. Um, for those CBP doctors, the CBP documentation suite would actually show the coordinate, the coordinate system in here as well. Um, so anterior head shift and the severity, let's say, in that case would be moderate. That says performed, yes. If you want to keep that every single visit, because we know their anterior head shift is going to be a consistent problem, probably um, it's not going to come back on after one visit. You want to have it say performed always. And if you look at the narrative first, you see moderate anterior head shift. Now on a subsequent visit, when the note comes up again, that performed always will be selected. These will default to no, because all you did it on the last visit, but you didn't say perform always. It just said performed yes, not performed always. So performed always, again, leaves that on every single note unless you remove this. So that will be there on every note unless you remove that finding or change that performed always. There's also free form fields in two different regions in the objective area. This one free field will come directly after that finding. This one will be at the end of the subjective note. You can see how that X comes here, but the end of, at the end of the note, one comes at the end. So if I go back and I put in some other finding, some more posture, uh, left head rotation, for example, and that's a mild. You'll see again in the narrative that at the end of note notation comes at the end of every other finding. This one stays right where, right next to that finding. Okay. In addition, you have other measurements up here that you can use. Um, height, uh, 6 foot 1. Body weight, let's say it's 185. Um, that automatically is going to calculate their BMI. You can put, in a similar way, you can put their blood pressure um, and so on. Again, all that will go into the narrative. Again, you can see here, this was performed yes. Now this will not show up on the next visit unless I change it to perform always. All right, so that's the really basic, basic of the objective section. Um, I hope that gives you enough information. There's a lot of different tests. You have all the, the nerve package tests, dermatomes, myotomes, uh, reflexes. There's vestibular tests in there. There's range of motion, palpation x-ray, posture, all those tests are in there with the results that uh, correspond to those. Again, the best way to use the um, objective section, which we're going to cover in the more advanced soap note videos, is to use the macros. The macro, what the macro will do is allow you to preload as many tests as you want according to a different type of note. So if a personal injury patient is there, you'll have a PI macro, let's say. Um, that will populate all the tests that you do on a PI patient and then all you have to do is update the findings. Also in future videos we're going to talk about how you can use um, the xdocs features or templates to do more thorough new patient and exams and reevaluations.